r slash no sleep posted by you slash horror underscore writer underscore 1717 i used to take the kids to a pool at a state park the lifeguard told me a creepy story it was a nice pool in ground concrete and very well maintained it was just in the middle of nowhere it was on state park ground surrounded by trees the entire thing was very nicely done with a chain link fence all around it to discourage after hour shenanigans it's just the thing was in the middle of a forest I have no idea what the planners were thinking. But it's free and the kids love it, so I guess who cares if it's in the middle of a forest, right? That's what I used to think. I took the kids one day and forgot to bring a book to read so I was bored. There's only so long you can stare at kids splashing around in the pool. I don't know how the lifeguards do it. I guess that's why they take turns every hour or so. With boredom my only companion and absolutely nothing else to do but bake in the roasting sun, I decided to talk to the lifeguard who was on duty. I asked if she'd ever seen anything odd or unusual here at the pool. She took her eyes off the kids for just a moment to size me up. Are you sure you really want to hear? She said turning her attention back to the swimmers. Sure, I said. Because once you hear, you won't be back, she said. I hesitated for a moment, then chuckled to myself, sizing her up. She was a thin girl that looked like she might just be out of high school or maybe a year or two into college. I imagine there was some story of a party gone wrong or some kid that nearly drowned. In the back of my mind was the thought, what if she's playing me? I decided I was bored enough not to care. So I nodded. Yes, I'm sure, I said. She leaned closer so that only I could hear the story she told. All the while watching the kids and never making eye contact with me. This was the story she told. I've been a lifeguard here for three years during the summer to help pay my college bills. Since a lot of lifeguards come and go, it was easy to get to number one in seniority. I was the only one who was full-time and had some benefits, like insurance. Everyone else was part-time and came and went quite often. Lately, we've been having trouble keeping people. We've had to cut some of the pool hours. I couldn't be here seven days a week, although my boss seemed to think I could. At first, I thought our dwindling workforce was due to the current worker shortage going on across the country. Why work here when you can find something better? But as time went on, I began to find out why they were really quitting this easy job. I always got to the pool first and did a walk around to make sure there was nothing broken. I picked up trash and generally made sure the pool is ready for guests. After that, I opened the lifeguard shack and tested the levels in the pool. One day I arrived a little earlier than usual and to my great surprise, I found wet footprints leading from the pool to the fence. The pool stays uncovered at night and it's possible for someone to sneak in. However, in the three years I had worked here, no one ever had. As odd as this seemed what was ever odder was the size of the prints. They were huge. I pulled out my phone and took some pictures before they dried out and even took a shot of my foot next to the wet footprint. It was nearly twice the size of my foot. Now I'm no basketball player. My foot is only a size 8 in women's, but still, twice my foot size didn't seem normal to me. In fact, this whole thing didn't seem normal. Why break into a pool to go swimming when the pool would be open in less than an hour? I shrugged it off and went about my daily routine. I opened the pool, and the people came in. No fuss, no muss. At the end of the day, I got another surprise. When I went to clean the filter, it was full of hair. Now don't get me wrong, there are usually some odd things in the filter, and hair is not the oddest. I once found an eyeball floating in the filter. It was from a kid's stuffed animal, but still, it was pretty freaky to see it there. This hair seemed different. There's always hair in the filter, but this was longer and thicker. It was almost as if someone let a dog swim in the pool. Again, I shrugged it off and cleaned the filter, but I logged it in the back of my mind. The next day the same thing happened. I made sure to get there a little early and there were the wet footprints again. It was as if I had scared someone off by arriving early. But how would they get their dog over the fence? It was 8 feet tall. Was someone sneaking their pet orangutan in to go swimming before hours? Was a bear somehow getting in and taking a dip? The hair I found didn't seem right for a bear. I searched all around the fence looking for any spots where something had dug under and gotten in. There was nothing. I double checked all the gates, they were secure and there were no spots where anything could get in. Again, when I cleaned the filter, there were more hairs. I kept some out of curiosity. On my next day off I drove to the college I attended and asked the professor if he could analyze the hair as a favor. He reluctantly agreed and told me it might be a few days. In the meantime, I was getting to work earlier every day. 
This mystery consumed me. I had to find out what was going on, not only for the cleanliness of the swimmers but for my own sanity. No matter when I arrived, whatever it was seemed to know I was coming and got out just in time. I decided to change my strategy. I drove to work early but parked my car at a trailhead a mile away from the pool. It took me around 20 minutes to walk to the pool. I approached as quietly as possible. As I reached the rise where I could see the top of the fence, I could hear splashing. I keep coming until I could see the level of the water. At first, I didn't see anything, then suddenly something exploded out of the water. It was massive and covered in long brown hair. It landed back in the water with a huge splash. I froze. I knew there was something but until now the reality hadn't hit home yet. There was a creature swimming in the same pool I watched every day. I stood there, transfixed on this apparition as it frolicked in the water like a kid. It spouted water out of its mouth 20 feet in the air as it floated on its back. My mind kicked out of frozen terror mode just enough for me to pull out my cell phone and take a picture. Unfortunately, I'd forgotten to turn the volume down. When it made the lens click sound the creature immediately snapped its attention to me. It glared at me for a long moment causing my veins to turn to ice. I expected it to run away, startled. But it didn't. It slowly rose out of the water and stepped onto the concrete surrounding the pool. I know it stood at least as tall as the fence as it stepped toward me. I was too terrified to snap another picture as it hurtled the fence in one leap and landed 40 feet in front of me. I had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. The relative safety of my car was a mile away. It might as well have been a hundred miles. I knew there was no way I could outrun this thing. It flexed its claws as it continued its slow advance toward me, fangs bared. I knew I was about to die. It closed to 10 feet away. I could hear its breathing and smell the chlorine mixed with wet animal smell as the water dripping from its fur. And then it paused. It cocked its head then gave me a look and disappeared into the forest. A few seconds later a car drove by. I let out a breath I didn't realize I'd been holding and started the long trek back to my car. Every step I took, I wondered if it was following me. Every sound I heard caused me to whip around and look to see if the monster was sneaking up behind me. It seemed to take forever to reach my car and after the last quarter mile, I ran. I didn't think, I knew it was following me. When I dove into my car, I locked the door and called my boss. I told him I needed to take the day off. He said he didn't have anyone to cover for me. If I took off, the pool would have to stay closed until my relief came in in 4 hours. I fought a hard battle between my fears and my responsibilities. I reluctantly drove to the pool and opened it. Everything I normally did, all of my daily routine took on an element of a horror movie. Every blind corner I felt like I was about to be attacked. Every time I was out in the open, I could feel eyes on me. When people came, I felt a little better having company, but as I scanned the swimmers to make sure they were safe I would constantly scan the trees for this monster to see if I was safe. I wondered if it would attack even with the swimmers there. My mind wandered to the movie Jaws. All the swimmers in the ocean were blissfully ignorant that they were about to be a meal for a malevolent creature. I wondered if my swimmers were about to share the same fate. When my shift finally, mercifully ended, I felt like I had been put through the ringer. As I drove home my attention was divided between the road and the image of that monster slowly approaching me, claws out, snarling. I didn't even see the truck that blindsided me. I woke in the hospital with machines beeping and tubes running in and out of me. The doctor told me how lucky I was. That my injuries weren't that bad, and I should be out of the hospital in a few days. I called the professor and asked him what he had found out about the hairs. He seemed hesitant and told me he would rather tell me in person. A few hours later he visited me in my hospital room. He said that he couldn't match the hairs with any known animal. But when he contacted some lesser known sources, they came up with an answer. I didn't really want to have my suspicions confirmed, but I needed to know for sure. He said it could be a Bigfoot. I pulled out my phone and showed him my picture of the creature. He took it and studied it. He zoomed up and scanned through the image like a kid that had found a hundred dollars. He asked if I could send him a copy of it. When I agreed he was so excited I thought he would jump into my hospital bed and kiss me. Knowing what was hunting me didn't make it any better. In fact, now I knew no one would believe me. The professor even said I should be careful who I tell. After he left, I called my boss. He never asked me how I was, only when I could get back to work. When I told him I quit he nearly blew a gasket. He screamed at me that it was my fault he had to close the pool and informed me that if I quit the insurance wouldn't pay for my hospital stay. So, I was trapped. I had to go back to the pool of terror and possibly face that thing. I had no desire to ever go back, but I had no choice. 
So back I went. Two days after I was released from the hospital, I was due for my first shift of opening the pool. I made sure I didn't go early. I knew this thing existed and I had no intention of trying to sneak up on it again. I was ready to live and let live. Unfortunately, it had other plans. I saw it more often, peeking out from behind trees, watching me as I watched the swimmers. When I closed the pool and walked back to my cars when I could especially feel its eyes on me. I practically ran to my car, slammed the door, and got out of there as fast as I could. I made sure my attention was focused on the road even though my eyes kept darting to the sides of the road. The following day I came to work a few minutes early and stopped at the ranger station on the way in. I told them what was happening, and they laughed me out of the building. The professor had told me to expect it but it was still hard seeing people I'd talked to and had grown to trust turn their back on me like that. I saw the creature again that day in the trees glaring at me but did my best to ignore it. When I got home, I was mentally and physically exhausted. My stress level was through the roof. I'd started taking pills to help me sleep because this thing was in my dreams as well. That evening as I tried to relax, I heard a commotion outside. I stepped out to find my trash cans knocked over, not an uncommon occurrence since I live on the outskirts of town. But this time when I went out to pick them up, it was there. It stood there much the same as the first day I discovered it, snarling and flexing its claws. I stood there, mind froze in fear, wondering at this dreadful apparition that stood before me. When it took its first step toward me, my fight or flight mode kicked in. I ran inside and locked the door. Then I called the police and told them someone was trying to break into my house. The monster helped corroborate my story by breaking a window while I was on the phone. I ran upstairs and hid in my bedroom closet. For a long time, there was a dreadful silence. What was it doing? Was it toying with me? And then I heard it. I could hear its massive footsteps as a dull thud on my carpet. I heard it slowly searching for me. It went all through the downstairs and then I heard footsteps coming upstairs. I could hear them slowly, methodically working their way toward my bedroom. They came into my room. I could hear them walk around my bed and then over to the closet door. For a long moment, it did nothing. Just stood there. I could hear my breathing turn rapid. I could feel the sweat run down my cheeks. I could picture the end of my life in bloody, gory detail. The door swung open, and I screamed. Ma'am, it's all right, I heard. I opened my eyes to see the police officer standing in front of me. I blinked hard to make sure he was real then threw myself into his arms. He held me for a moment then pulled me away. Are you alright? He asked. I couldn't answer. My mouth wouldn't work. It took me a few minutes to be able to form a few words. Is it gone? I didn't see anyone, and I searched the whole house. I nodded automatically not really hearing what he was saying. He said the only thing they could do was patrol the area more often. He left shortly after, leaving me to my terrified self. There was no way I'd be sleeping anytime soon. I stayed up all night watching movies. Mostly comedies, anything but horror. When the time rolled around for me to go to work, I wasn't up to it. I called the boss and told him I was sick, but he wasn't having it. He demanded I come to work anyway. I got an extra large coffee on the way to work that day wondering how I was going to stay alert enough to watch for swimmers. When I got there the answer was already provided for me. As I started my daily routine, eyes starting to the trees, I saw there was something floating in the pool. It took every ounce of courage I had not to run to my car and never return. I slowly approached it and saw it was a deer, at least what was left of one. Its throat had been slashed and blood hovered in the water around its body. What was even more disturbing was there was a drawing on the concrete. I approached and looked at the drawing. I immediately covered my mouth and backed away. It was a star with a circle around it and it was drawn using the deer's blood. I snapped a picture with my phone and sent it to my boss. He replied, very funny. I told him it wasn't a joke. I took pictures of the deer in the water and sent him those as well. He accused me of doing it so I wouldn't have to work that day. I shrugged it off, nearly telling him who or should I say what was responsible. He told me to wait where I was and not to open the pool. I put out the closed sign out and covered up the pentagram with a tarp. When people started showing up to swim, I apologized and told them we were closed for repairs. A few asked me what repairs and I told them it was a filter problem and should be cleared up soon. When the boss arrived, he was beyond livid. He walked around looking at the deer in the blood in total disbelief. He screamed at me that the pool would have to be completely drained and cleaned. He threatened to make me pay for it. I told him I had nothing to do with it and if he tried to blame me, I would call the police and press charges for harassment. 
that seemed to settle him down a little. He told me to try to get the blood off the concrete while he started the process of draining the pool. Scrubbing did next to nothing. I found an old pressure washer that we used to clean the buildings and tried it. That seemed to work and please the boss that he wouldn't have to pay to have it sandblasted. All this time, I kept an eye on the woods, looking for my hairy stalker. At times I caught glimpses of him as I cleaned up the mess, I know he had left. I wondered at the ramifications of him killing the deer and making the symbol. I wondered if he knew what he was doing. After a long day of cleaning and listening to the boss griping, I finally got into my car, exhausted. As I drove home, I saw the monster on the side of the road. I was tempted to run it over but didn't think my car would survive it. As I was about to pass him, I saw him holding a deer by its neck and legs. To my horror, he threw the deer at my car. Time slowed as I had no time to react. Instead of hitting the brakes, my foot slipped off the brake pedal and hit the gas. It turned out to be a good accident. The deer hit the back of my car instead of the front. I truly believe he was aiming at my windshield. I didn't dare stop. I kept driving. Only once I got home did I check the damage. There was quite a dent in the rear of my car behind the passenger door, but it was still drivable. I believe if I had hit the brakes, it would have totaled my car or gone right through the windshield and killed me. I shuddered at the thought of this monster actively trying to kill me. I wondered what I had done to deserve death in the eyes of this creature. I thought back to the first time I saw the footprints. I replayed everything that had happened. It struck me that he had seen me take pictures of him and that seemed to anger him. I thought of a radical idea. It was stupid and I didn't think it would work, but it was something to try rather than having this monster stalking me the rest of my life. I drove out to the pool early the next morning. It was strange seeing it empty. I don't think I've ever seen the bottom of the pool so clean. I stood on the concrete beside the pool and held up my phone. The picture I had taken of the creature was on the screen. I saw it come out of the woods and leap the fence, landing right in front of me. I tried not to show how very frightened I really was. He looked at me, then at the phone. I took it as a good sign that his fangs weren't bared. I set the phone on the ground and backed away. He reached down and picked it up, looking at the picture for a long moment, then turned and leapt over the fence disappearing into the woods. Wow, that was some story, I said. You should write fiction. That was great. You want to know the best part? She said never taking her eyes off my kids swimming in the pool. Sure. She leaned a little closer and whispered, it's true. I smiled and rolled my eyes. Sure it is, I said. I'll tell you what, she said. Why don't you look over my right shoulder into the tree line and tell me what you see? I did as she asked, grinning at the joke this lifeguard was playing on me when suddenly my smile faltered. I saw something in the trees. It was a brown head peeking around a tree. At first, I thought it was a co-worker in on the joke, but the head was over 8 feet tall. Its eyes bored into mine and narrowed. I found myself looking away despite myself. When I looked back, it was gone. Something wrong? She said. H, how long ago was the pool reopened? I said. Last week. I looked around and over in the corner on the concrete I could see the faintest outline of a star. My eyes grew wide. Welcome to my world, she said without the slightest hint of humor. I whipped around toward the pool. Come on, kids, we're leaving, I called out. Aw, oh, dad. We haven't even been here an hour. Why do we have to go? I looked at the lifeguard and then glanced up into the trees. It's not safe, I said. I loaded up the car with three disgruntled kids and started home. On the way, I kept glancing into the woods. I swear I saw the woods glance back.